is up, lads, and welcome back to another episode of the Pez Universe podcast. We are back for what is probably our 20th comeback by now, I'd say, or 20th revival. We are on episode 22. It's been a month since we had our last podcast, but we have been busy. We've got a lot of stuff on, but we're back eventually. And of course, I'm with my main man, my main co-host, extraordinaire all the way over in Birmingham. It is none other than Weza FC. What is going on, Weza? Don't tell them where I live. Yeah, uh, man. I'm giving all the personal <laughs> details. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good evening. But as, as you said, we have been we have been hard at work in between all different types of things. So it's very good to actually get the podcast back off and running for, as yeah, you man. mentioned, our 20th uh, 20th or so reboot. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, more comebacks than The Undertaker, I swear to God. It's like, yeah, it just, yeah. it's so busy, man. And you've been busy then as well, obviously, not throwing all the blame on you. Last week, we had technical <laughs> difficulties with me. My internet was acting up my Skype, so um, yeah. it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, it, we'll probably be getting back into the swing of things come March because, you know, it seems like such a long way away. But I was just thinking there, like, we're probably going to have some Pez news like what within two months you know so it's it's scary it's scary how fast it kind of moves from like talking about pez 2020 talking about all the issues what we'd like to see in a new pez and then it's like whoa now here's the new pez like so it's it's uh it's mad you know that's what happens when you get old once you get like past 25 26 for any younger listeners it's time dilation the time just goes quicker than everything so (laughs) every year is faster and faster like every time, every time I have to go away, like the missus turn around to me and go, is it, "Has it really been two weeks?" It's yeah, like, yeah, it's mad. Yes, it has. <laughs> yeah, man, you've been doing good up. Anyway, we've been speaking quite a bit, obviously off podcast, just starting some plans out for the new year as we do. We'll be kicking things off uh, pretty much in March. We're going to be planning some stuff again, anyway. So a couple of announcements here and there. But you've been good and uh, enjoying your eFootball commentary as usual. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, as as you've probably seen. It's it's been a uh, it's been a fascinating little watch, to be fair. Um, it's it's been interesting seeing teams come out of the woodwork and see see them finally getting their games together, and it's uh, it's 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 teeing up nicely. No no team is out of it yet, which yeah. is the I think is the the most important thing for any type of kind of uh, uh, esports uh, league is that if if a team you know if it's still going to the right to the end then you know it's going to be it's going to be great fun. Uh, I think we've got what four match days left four as a, days, a, yeah. a time of recording so it's going to be a fascinating little watch to see uh, see how it all pans out. Mm. And a couple of as with any competition any sport like there's a couple of surprises there's a couple of kind of things that you're going to want to tune in to watch like all the time whether it's like a rival game or whether it's you know that it's a do or die match so when you're coming into this time into the competition or this part of the competition, the league, you're going to want to watch your favorite team or whatever. So it is, I, I, I find it hard to watch cause I'm a little jealous of you, you know, being over <laughs> in Barcelona. So I, I, I just watch it in small portions, to be honest, if not, not to get too envious of you. <laughs> well, you just watch it in the parts where I'm not speaking. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of mute when you come on, I kind of mute it and then <laughs> just pretend, you know, but, uh, kind of don't really realize how much how much you know it's kind of been you know i saw there the other day harry uh posting up some of the the candid photos that they've uh they've taken of us uh kind of in, fr- in front of the uh in front of the desk and you know, <laughs> but, you know it, it's almost watching well watching you know literally looking at the photos i can hear my own laugh at that point because <laughs> it, between him and adam they just have me absolutely cracking up <laughs> it's it's and it's it's a great environment to be in yeah, well, that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you yeah exactly. You can't, We're just you can't waiting on the Pez calendar through. shoot now. You know, the, yeah, the that's full it, Monty. That's it. <laughs> E-football. I'll give, I'll give you November for free. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, a lot, I suppose, has changed since we last spoke, just to get back onto the Pez chat. Uh, Data, Pack tr- Data Pack 4 has, has come out, and obviously we've had a bit of time. And it's probably been good that we, we didn't do a podcast originally on Data Pack 4, because you do need a bit of time to bet in with it and you do need a bit of time to play a few games and stuff i know you've been playing a good bit of pez uh online you've been back streaming quite a bit which has been great but uh, like again when any data pack comes out and they come out and they say look there's been there's been general gameplay you know balances and stuff to improve the the overall experience i think some people on one side of the coin they're like oh this is definitely different and then other people are like no it's the exact same so there does be a lot of kind of in the eye of the beholder what you're what you're playing after an update or a data pack like mm. you, like in terms of the gameplay let's start with the gameplay because we have a load of stuff to get through with data pack 4 just to give a brief 
synopsis the synopsis of it but let's start with the gameplay and then we'll move on to like the new legends and, and stuff like that but with the gameplay yourself are you finding any difference or is this is it is it pretty much the same for you um i think in terms of the gameplay itself i'm or in terms of the core gameplay i'm not really experiencing anything too dissimilar than, than what was there previously yeah. Yeah. you know i know there's that the like you mentioned there is that danger when you first have a data pack out that you know you can have that that kind of placebo effect where mm. you think that something's changed or you're you know you can be convinced that something's changed um i think sometimes i think that the pace kind of feels a bit slicker and a bit quicker yeah. so but obviously that's server server and, and connection permitting yeah, there's a lot of variables in there yeah but when it's kind of all kind of lined up in a little bit of a row it seems a little a little bit quicker but not you know it's nothing to kind of write home about in in my eyes mm. um but yeah, but in, in terms of that, it's you know I still suck, so uh, you know that, that changes. <laughs> that has, that hasn't changed. Yeah, well, it's definitely been one of the like one of the like one of the worst pezzes for me in terms of like how good I am at the game. Like I, I'm just I'm not I'm not that good at the game this year. Like I I don't I think my biggest problem is I don't play it direct enough. Like I've always been a possession style player, and I just can't get into the you know fernando santos one two kind of up the pitch style of play um you know and that's that's the way a lot of people play and obviously people that get success out of it that's not saying that they're not skilled or they're not whatever but it does pays i think online especially because i play so much master league and because i play so much offline with my friends and stuff i find it very hard to go like super direct like just for my club and then switch it back to possession for master league and stuff you know because yeah. you can't you can't actually play that way against the ai on like superstar difficulty in master league because they just i won't say that the ai is like absolutely amazing in master league this year but they do adapt to you a little bit if you're playing against a good team yeah. whereas like in my club it is very direct you know that's not a bad thing um but i think you do even agree with that that it is a very direct kind of style of gameplay yeah, and and I think going, you know, in terms of from going front to back with a with a game, it's mm. it's you know, when you're online with it, it is vastly different. You know, I I have that luxury as like we mentioned, going to watch eFootball Pro and seeing pros play, you know, a, a, a you know a kind of a, a, a you know a local level mm. like where it's kind of a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit more balanced. You see the likes of Celtic who can play possession football and mm. it, and it, and it, you know pay dividends at some points. Obviously, you have those who go very direct, and it still pays dividends. But you yeah. can see that there's a difference in the you know in between two kind of set gameplays. Um, I think looking at at it, like you said, it is it is a little bit like I said, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with the the fast paced nature of it. it. It's a case of if you can get the ball forward, and you know you can find your forwards in the right amount of space, you can mm. you know you can exploit a lot of a lot of space and a lot of you know cause a lot of damage. Yeah. And I think. You know, like you said, it's very rare that you see somebody play possession game, you know, online. Because like you said, it, there are that many benefits to playing a fast pace and playing it forward quickly that it's kind of hard to ignore. Mm. Well, that's like, I, I always go back to a couple of years back. I'd say with PES 17, well, probably PES 16 and 17 and kind of on from there. And like, I love PES 16. I, I have very, very fond memories of it. I, I just love that that kind of online mode at, at that time but a lot of the pez online gameplay back then was direct in a different way so it was like either long balls like true balls or like crosses were op and then in like i think it was pez 16 it was basically turn and run Do you know so if you turned if you just booted the ball up as hard as you could to your striker you know instant control turn and run that was kind of your that was that and I, you know that was your main weapon i think that people had not saying that it was unstoppable not saying that it was like the only way to play and i'm not saying that about pez 2020 either because i know like obviously there's some excellent excellent players there you know friends of the site that we watch guys that are you know you're seeing week in week out like at the football that are just you know top class pez players you know and it's um there is obviously different ways to play the game but in terms of for me i genuinely think that they've kind of they've stopped one way of like you know passing the ball to say somebody like mbappe and turning mm -hmm. and putting his putting his head down and just like bullying his way through um i think they've kind of stopped the long true balls like i know that they're still kind of like the kickoff type 
you know like issue yeah. where people can just take one touch back to you know a deep line dmf and it's a long true ball and if you're not set manually you're gonna you know you're gonna concede eventually like that but i do think that the the one touch passing and the little triangles like i just think that they're slightly op like even for you know that is the style this year of how to break down defenses like the easiest and quickest way but yeah. i still think that they're a little bit op and it's something that i i would like to see them fix for any other online experience in the future um you know we will obviously get into a small bit of pez 2021 we'll probably leave the bulk of it for for the next podcast to get into that but it is something that i think even you know what stands out to me is that like if you're if you're playing a game and you're winning like you have to be enjoying winning Do you know there's no point turning on the game and being up three nil and being like oh yeah but the three goals i got were just kind of i just want to get this win and then when you go up three nil it's like oh i just want the match to be over you know so like i used to always prefer grinding out a one nil victory or and i just think that they're kind of few and far between now having those experiences because you feel like you can always concede like a goal from a player that's so direct if that makes oh, sense yeah, yeah you know you never feel totally totally safe even if the player that you're playing against isn't you know a Torito. do you know what i mean like you always yeah. feel like i do anyway even in divisions like i'd feel right i'm two one i'm two nil up and then you can see the goal in the 70th minute and you're like oh fuck i'm going total blue here now do you know and not that i would but you do feel like you kind of feel like that you're under pressure the whole time do you know yeah uh, yeah and that's the thing it's that it's i think it's that that is a little bit of a a kind of a byproduct of of the of the kind of mentality of players at the moment. Mm. I think is because you know, and I think it's a byproduct of obviously you know we talked about the rating system before you know and things like that as well. Yeah, is that because it's so important to people to to keep their rating up? Mm. You know, you know, you take a loss against a three hundred rated opponent, and you know because you take your eye off the ball and because things don't work out the way that they you know you think that they should. Yeah. And, all of a sudden you're down 15 points it's going to take you at least five games to make them back yeah you know and even then those five games are going to have to be against like you know players who are vastly out of your rating range you know so it, you know it, it is i think it's a byproduct of that is that everyone has kind of become a de facto tryhard yeah because they're having to retain their ratings so much mm. because that because otherwise you've got you know you've got nothing to kind of pin your hat on almost yeah. Well, I think it's, I think it is, it is kind of the day and age. And we saw a couple of weeks ago <clears throat> or uh, a couple of days ago, I should say that Ninja kind of the, the Fortnite streamer Ninja, he had a very, he had a very polarizing. Well, it's not a polarizing if you agree with him, but it had, well, that's what polarizing means, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah polarizing is I'm going to edit that out, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I won't. But um, yeah, he had a very polarizing view on, you know, he was, he was saying that if you're losing a game and you're okay with losing it, that you're basically, you know, that it's basically a terrible attitude to have. And I think it was taken out of context in, you know, there was a lot of context behind it that was lost in just the clip that like it was circulating around. But I do think that like nobody likes to lose. And especially in a game like Pez where, you know it is it's not like a basketball game where you're you know you have a chance to score like every 10 seconds like yeah. in pez you're only you know you're okay you might have the crazy games where you see screenshots go on twitter and it's like oh look at this match it was like eight seven or you know fucking six five or whatever like a crazy game but most of the time it is going to be that if you do concede two or three goals like you're not going to win do you know like obviously very good players can come back from that but I do think that there is kind of a sense of, you know, like it did, like nobody nobody wants to lose, like, and that's that is something that just seeps into it. No matter how cool and calm and collected you are, it's yeah. a it is just a thing that no matter how easy going you are, I think if you're spending time doing something, like I don't think anyone wants to wants to lose, and that does feed into, it does feed into trying, you know, hard not to lose. Then, yeah. you know, which does have a lot of. I don't even, I don't know how they'd ever change that though because every game you know the only way that they could possibly change that is to reward kind of like not you know if you're not winning regularly that you're still rewarded like your time is rewarded rather than the results and we've spoken yeah. about this at length um you know that if if you have a grind aspect to it that no matter what you do every pass every shot and target every single thing gets you some sort of xp that's working away in the background that eventually 
you know gets you rewards or you know coins yeah. or gp or whatever we've gone into that before but i have a question for you just to kind of off the back of that long winded way of asking you but do you think like in terms of pez going forward and it is kind of controversial to say because fifa you know is is, is suffering from a, a similar kind of issue where certain people in the community in their community the same as certain people in our community want the game one way and then the other side of it want this kind of you know an, an opposite way to them basically and one side is looking for the most realistic like possible simulation of the game and then the other side is looking for look i just want to sit down and have fun you know and score nice goals and you know win lose or draw i just want to enjoy myself playing it like do you think that pez and i know we've covered this before about embracing its realistic kind of yeah. aspect of it or whatever so i don't want to tread over that too much but yeah. like do you think games in general like football games in general do you think they should be more realistic or do you think they should be more fun i think personally i think you want to make it a, a, as fun a game as possible mm. for me personally mm. like I, granted that's not for me saying that i don't you know i don't like realistic gameplay yeah yeah you know great, you want it based in realism gameplay, basically yeah, you want, yeah, you'd love to have a game where it's pace and realism, but ultimately, when you're putting on a video game, you want to have fun. That's mm. the primary role of a video game is mm. to have fun. If you're not having fun, it's it's not a well made video game. Mm. If it's not, do, you know, to to you know, to, if it's not doing its job, it's you know, it's not entertaining you. It's you know, it's not providing you with any type of fun. You know, it's not providing you with any type of escapism, and therefore you you're not having fun. Yeah. Uh, I think for me, I think it needs to, it, you know. I, I think that as a gamer, I think that's what you need. If if you want realism, you'd be down the park playing footy with your pals, or yeah. you'd go and play in Sunday League, or you'd go and play five a side, or you're going, yeah. You know, if you want realism, you just go outside because mm. that's that's your realism. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I like, guess there's so many it's, hardcore it's, Pez it's, fans listening it's, to this now. I'd be like, no, yeah. Well, yeah, no, no, <laughs> we, 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 we hate you. We want our VR experience on P- on PlayStation. Like yeah. you know, it's just like no. Actually, if you want realism, you could you could easily go somewhere else to deliver it. Granted, though, that I think, and again, this kind of that cold point there, what you've just made, is kind of where games companies are. Mm. They're being between a rock and a hard place yeah. because if you go down the fun route, you're going to alienate the realism route or the uh, uh, the alienate the realism audience. If mm. you go down the realism route, you're alienating the fun audience. Yeah. And there's see, not, like the thing is now that no technology happening. is getting so powerful in that, like before, and I see there's just been, you know, a renaissance of people playing classic PES titles like PES 5, PES 6. You know, I even seen Konami France, they were streaming a, a tournament tonight in PES 6. Like, and it's, it's cool to see stuff like that. But I, I just think back then, even though the games were incredibly, like the memories I have of those games, like PES 6 with Adriano, was just like on the xbox 360 was the best version that i had i thought was just they were just amazing games at the time they still hold up if you if you relearn the mechanics and kind of just go with the graphic style and all that but i just think back then that like if you think back to those pez games they were very fun you know they were very pick up and play you know like the old roberto carlos or the old adriano where you could take the ball in midfield and just hoof it um but yeah i do i do kind of like, do you think that that's just that's only going to get worse with the next gen of consoles? Like, because it's like, where does it stop? Where people want both sides of it? I think, I think that I think the problem with the next the next set of consoles and potentially is, is something that will will it's kind of a general reflection on on people in within life is is the expectation. Mm-hmm. People people have a very quiet expectation that there's going to be some type of paradigm shift where Pez is going to get back to, to where it was, mm. you know, but, but, you know, we still, like we say, we, we, we mentioned it, God knows how many times on the podcast about, as we just mentioned there, Pez five, Pez six, you know, the, the glory years of, of, of Pez. Mm. And I think people are, are kind of hanging their hats on, Oh, well, this happened last time. You know, we, we, you know, we had a we had a, a bad version of Pez and then we had a, the, the best Pez ever. Mm. And now, and now we're in this kind of, region where it's not quite it's not quite amazing but it's not quite terrible mm. and it's kind of in this kind of this kind of lull period where i think people i think it's going to be a set it's setting people's expectations uh mm. and i think that's that's going to be where the key is is what are people expecting out of, of pez going forward um 
you know, because I think that's going to be the, the way you're going to have those issues. You know, like you said, you know, if you were to put around Twitter and go, hey, actually, you know what? I think PES 2021 is going to be the best PES ever. Mm. And then it doesn't turn out to be it. You're going to have a load of people that will have screenshotted it. And, uh, hey, do you remember this time that you said this? <laughs> and it's just like... Kevin Keegan the- moment. Yeah, but you get that. It's mm. it's that it's that it's that moment then that people will always remember. They'll remember the first time they heard, Oh, but you know what, PES twenty twenty one's gonna be amazing. And then if you then I mean, because you know, I, I, I even had it where, where I had capture days and mm. I was, you know, or not even capture days, but on the kind of the, the days where people would then ask me, Oh, what so what did you think? And I was like, Well, do you know what? If the game stays as it is, you're on for a winner. Mm. And then the game that, that that and there's a deliberate reason why I framed that mm. that query or that that reason for it was because in in times gone by, games change between demos and you know the full mm. the full game. Yeah. And you know there are tweaks and there are things that they have to sort out. And we you know we know that you know historically that people have to do that. They have mm. to because you know they might find some game breaking glitch in the background, which means that actually all of your players are twelve foot tall when actually mm. they shouldn't be. So they've got to they've got to fix it. But as a byproduct, you fix something down one end, you could potentially break something down the other. Yeah. So I think I think for me, I think next next gen of consoles and and at least the the you know the the kind of the the expectation from PES twenty twenty one. I think I just urge everybody just to be cautious because you know you never quite know how the game's going to turn out. Mm. You might turn around and go, "This is the last PES I'm ever playing. This game is shit." Mm. Not saying that it is, but like. And then actually, all of a sudden, it comes to like a full release of PES 2021. And you go, oh my God, this mm. game is the best game ever. Mm. I'm very sorry, blah, blah, blah. And you'll have a load of people go, oh, do you remember that time you said that you're never going to play PES again? Mm. Yeah, but that's, that, like, that's, that's just a, that's always going to happen because like, yeah. even we've played PES, like I played PES in like back, feel so long ago now, but like back in June, like at E3 last year. And like, no matter how, how many people ask me it's the same answer to all their questions that they ask me is like oh was it so different was the speed different or whatever like the core gameplay itself like stayed pretty much the same like uh, people kind of don't understand that they're adding different you know they when you look at the game at e3 like they're showcasing the game off like as best as possible you know on amazing tvs like everything is top notch like you're overplaying it for the first time and I've talked about this at length, like people are probably going to skip this part, but like you do, you do when you're playing something new, like it takes about 30 or 40 hours to actually start to see, you know, the repetition and stuff like yeah. that's, that's why it's so hard, even in a controlled environment where you're playing 15, 16 hours, like our of gameplay or 17 hours that I played, like I played way more than that. But when you're sitting down to play it, like by the time release comes like launch day, like the minute the servers are switched on for online gameplay like you're playing against guys all over the world that have a different way of playing the game than when you're sitting beside somebody at an event like if i'm to play you at a capture event like you're not gonna like you know what i'm saying (laughs) you're not gonna dick me like in terms of i have to score 10 goals here or else you know like whatever like me and sep tried to do that at the manchester event and like we were like, oh my bad. When we like square one across, or we would like, you know, do a tap in, we'd be like, oh you sorry, dude. What you want. Yeah, you do. We were trying to really like frustrate each other and like kind of, you know, test test the game out. But it is hard, and like I still maintain that, you know, when you're talking about my club and you're talking about like you know Pez as a whole, like my club is in a complete separate category of his own. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's it shouldn't even be. I know it is still gameplay and you're using all the features of the main game, but like even match day, comparing match day to my club, like matches or division matches to match day is different because of different stuff going on with the, you know, with like with connection, with matchmaking, if it's, if it's, um, if it's like a tree bar connection or whatever that you, you know, when match day, I don't think that that's even an option, is it? No, no. We just so like straight. you're, you're, you know, you're messing with, you're playing different people from all over the world and stuff like it is it is very hard obviously dedicated servers is the way to go to maybe not fix it like obviously it's never going to be perfect with an online game but it probably would like help it um but i just think you're always going to have issues in a game you know and i think people back in pez 5 and pez 6 we might look back and say they were the greatest games ever at the time but i'm sure that there was people as well that were frustrated with the games back then 
you know oh, you yeah, just don't hear about it because social media wasn't around yeah i was about know? to say that the, the world of the world of of kind of facebook and twitter and 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 you know everywhere else it, it it would have been you know it would have been you know properly properly bad like mm. i i remember you know again it's a it's a kind of a a different type of well, it's a different type of game in the same warehouse but i remember being part of the fifa 10 forums like mm. the ea forums and they used to be littered yeah. with people who were annoyed with the game mm. and it's just kind of like you know you know that there, there wasn't really that type of or there wasn't really that type of forum type of feel to it at least yeah. not that i not that I remember, but then again, I I, I have a terrible memory, and I'm sure yeah. somebody will no, be able but there to correct. Would, there me. wouldn't have been like, could you could you imagine if like if we were back in an age now where like the transition from PS6 off the PS2 and that golden like you know because they were like ten out of ten games, they were selling millions of copies, and yeah. then we had PS2008, which was basically you know no no edit mode, like completely stripped back, like there was no like actual modes in the xbox version if i remember correctly there was a load of modes missing from launch and all this like if that would happen nowadays with the age of social media and you know petitions and all this sort of stuff like people would go crazy so it's, it is hard to it is hard to remember back to you know pes 2008 pes 2009 but you know those were some rough rough games like compared to what we're getting now as bad and all as it is now I still think that it, like PES 2020 is at its worst playable and at its best one of the better PES games from a core gameplay standpoint. Like if you have a good Master League match or if you have a good online match or a good co-op match with two of your buddies as you know all about. Yeah. When it clicks for you, like I don't think there's been a better PES since maybe PES 13, which I loved or PES 16, which I love for different reasons. But yeah. that's just my opinion. I could be I could be fucking getting screamed at here from <laughs> from somebody listening on their way to work or way home from work, seeding, foaming yeah. at them out at me, yeah. saying I'm a fanboy or whatever. But it well, is what it is. That, we've made that point before, though. In terms of co-op, it, it is the it is the best mode. Yeah. The key thing about it is from a from a from a you know a positive point for for Konami is, is that there's no game mode like it. you know in terms of for a football game. Yeah, it's from, amazing. I mean, the only thing that I can think of that's even comparable in terms of a sports game is the you know the 3v3 stuff you can do on nba 2k yeah but there's in terms of football there's in terms of football there's nothing like it granted you had i think there was a um there was a what a co-op seasons mode on fifa once upon a time but mm. nothing like this play co-op like couch ultimate team i think can't you with a yeah. guest like that's what i used to, i used to actually enjoy playing that back in like is it a FIFA 15? I'd say was was the one I played the most. Like I put up a tweet the other day about how you know, uh, you know, a negative thing travels you know further than a than a than a positive thing, and you know, just being nice to people will normally get the kind of the, you know, the the kind of the job done. You know, mm-hmm. the, and the manners cost nothing. Yeah. And somebody said, well, as a counterpoint, actually, sometimes you need to shout at people because otherwise the message doesn't sink in. I'm like, well, okay. I, I don't agree with that approach, yeah. but I respect the fact that the you know the person has the opinion. Mm. You know, I may not agree with it, but I'm not going to then turn around and go, "No, your opinion's wrong." Like, no, don't know what you're on about. Mm. It's because you you that's that's when you then shut down having any feedback with people. Yeah. If you're closed off and you only have your opinion and your opinion is king, that's you can't. You're not going to learn mm. in terms of going going forward in, in any walk of life. You're no. not going to learn anything. Because you'll be so closed off to your own ideas that actually, you know. Jesus yeah. Christ, if I if I agreed with everything that the missus does, like <laughs> I'd be fucking in the madhouse. Like, but you have you know, at the end of the day, you're not gonna break up over something that you you know, you have a different opinion on. Do you know, if yeah, that was the case you'd have no relationships at all. But I, I just think that the the day of debate and stuff, like, that needs to be a thing where it's like, you know, I respectfully disagree. You know, that's it. Like just move on if you're not gonna come to some sort of decision because yeah. i You're think people are afraid to get engaged in conversation now because they're afraid of a looking like a fool and making a fool of themselves or b like getting involved in something so toxic that it actually becomes upsetting Do you know where it's like it's easy be a big brave man on on social media but like or woman but like people can be very toxic with their words do you know what i mean so like it can it can fast become a thing where it's all well and good until you're getting DMs at like two or three o'clock in the morning and like 
you know, it's people just literally hurling abuse at you, you know, because of an opinion you have over something. Like that's when yeah. it can get 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 to the next level. Um, which I think we probably will bounce into a little bit because obviously you have had an announcement since we were last on which are which are new charity streams so i'll let people tell i'll let you tell the people that are listening about that charity stream that you do in case they they haven't caught up with the last one or two that you've done yeah yeah no i'll let you put your teeth back in while i explain this to people so yeah <laughs> um it, for those who are completely unaware of, of of what i do so i uh the last couple of well i said last couple of times i've i've done a couple of uh 24 hour charity streams for the benefit of uh my local uh samaritans charity samaritans are like an unpaid service they uh essentially offer kind of like essentially it's like a it's like a helping ear like you know you can basically you can just call them at any time during the day 24 7 365 they're there on christmas day they're there basically just whenever um and it's a solely volunteer service that they do so obviously they you know their kind of running costs and their operating costs are actually run out of people's donations and people's fundraising so uh, you know, if, if you guys have seen photos of me, you'll know I'm I'm the slightly huskier gentleman. You guys will know that actually, I, you know, I'm not going to be able to go and do a fun run anytime soon. Um, so I try and do the thing that I can do, which is obviously stream. Um, the last two times that we've done it, I think we've raised, I think it was around 700 pounds the first time. It was around about 830, I think it was the second time. So we raised about 1500 pounds, give or take, in around 12 months. Um, we're doing another one um in uh april so it's uh, april the 10th it's on good friday so for any of you guys that work in an office you'll be off work so you got no excuses to, to not come in and see no i'm kidding uh, but we'll be we'll be live from 24 hours um still got to rain in the kind of finer details there are a couple of things i'm yet to announce not to be too teasery about it because i'm not normally that type of guy but there's a couple of things i'm yet to announce um which i've got to kind of just just kind of cross the t's and dot the i's on um but yeah uh, target to raise or at least the target that we're aiming for is a thousand pounds if we can get anywhere close to that obviously it'd be a massive achievement and mm. uh you know shout out to uh to carson who's actually uh was our first donator on i think it was tuesday, tuesday I think, yeah. uh yeah who uh who donated uh to the cause so he's got the ball off and rolling so you know we're on the march as it were uh but yeah we you know it, it's a it's a it's a it's a charity that are close to it's close to my heart because obviously with my mental health issues, with my kind of, you know, counseling and things like that, that I've been quite open with in the past, which, you know, has probably caught a lot of people off guard, but you know, in terms of my own kind of journey, you know, had I known that such a charity existed, you know, before time, I probably wouldn't have been so kind of, you know, kind of at, at my wits end. Mm. And and to kind of come through the back end of or to come out the front end of of that journey, um, and to kind of provide some kind of assistance to other people that might be going through a rough time, you know, it, it's it's kind of the very least I can do to try and help. Mm. I know, but it is it is a it's an amazing like thing that you are doing, you know. And I know we always undersell what we do ourselves, but it is like <laughs> you're talking about they're raising fifteen hundred quid, like it's that's a hell of a lot of money you know over two years for like a charity so it is going to be something that i think people will get behind obviously we will as well and we'll we'll support you as best as we can but like in terms of the actual charity itself what you're saying there about like mental health and help for people that are struggling i suppose with anything like it is it is kind of uh the reason why we kind of make a part of the podcast and people seem to appreciate it we've had you've had some lovely messages from people um that we've covered before where people have listened to the i think one episode we kind of really did a i think it was like a 40 minute discussion on mental health and stuff yeah um i'll try i will link it in the in the description of this one but i think it was about 10 episodes back or so um but we got a couple of lovely messages off people that had said you know i usually don't listen to the podcast for this it's usually for pez but you know this touched the nerve or yeah. you know sound for that it was a really good conversation and t you know thanks for for bringing it up or whatever but it does kind of cross reference with with gaming and stuff um a lot i think and it is it is something that everyone has a different way like opinions everyone has a different way of dealing with like their struggles like whether yeah. it's it's work whether it's real life you can put a face on what the actual issue is or whether it's something internal that you can't really you know that you can't even find it hard to get the words to describe what you're feeling some days you just feel like you, know, you just feel down or 
whatever it is and then there's some days where you know you're just going through a lot of stuff that you just don't see you don't see how you know you're you're going to cope with it which is why that the charity that you're doing it for the Samaritans is such a good cause because it's totally anonymous and you can just like have someone at your at your call like our beck and call whenever you're at your your low point um but like for you yourself Wes obviously we've touched on this before and you're excellent to talk about things you know like everyone is different like yeah. some people like even even for myself like I I kind of internalize a lot of stuff and I know I've said that to you before and you kind of know that about me anyway but like I'd internalize a lot of stuff whereas you're very good to explain and you know talk about your issues and stuff and be open about it but like do you feel kind of that like social media and like everything like that do you think it's it's kind of a dangerous like do you think that's why people are more do you think there's more cause for concern now with people because of social media and stuff or do you think people have always been like this and it's just because social media is out now that it's shining more of a spotlight on it I think I think it's it's a little bit of both. I think with social media, it can be an incredibly positive thing to to have. So, like as you, as you mentioned, for example, we had, you know, we've we've had messages on 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 YouTube. Mm. I've had you know I've had Twitter DMs from people from off the back of the the last um, the last stream that we did. Um, obviously, there was an incredibly brilliant moment in in the fact that our, you know the stream kind of just all opened up and you know people started chucking in you know, kind of questions to Christian and, and, mm. and, and, and really opened up about their own kind of, you know, things that are happening to them. And, you know, we, we all would love to, to put our, you know, to put a face on things and we'd all love to be able to say, do you know what? Everything's absolutely fine, but sometimes you, you aren't okay. And, you know, sometimes it is actually better to, to just let the valve out, you know, mm. just to kind of open it up and just, and just relieve it a little bit because, you know, you, know, you bottle it up for too long, you'll end up one day you'll just kind of realize that everything's kind of gone to pot and you don't even realize that it's happened. Mm. And I think I think with you know, with with social media, like I said, it, it can be a very powerful thing to 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 unite people. And on the flip side though, is that you know, there are some people out there that are incredibly pessimistic. Mm. Uh, and you know, and some people think, Oh well, do you know what, Wes? You 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 know, I, I, I may have may have detractors in much oh, Wes, do you know what? You're just doing that for effect. It's like you haven't had any issues, like you you're always happy. It's like eh, actually not necessarily the case. You know, there are you know, there are things that that, you know, you know, I have kind of coping mechanisms like, you know, as everyone will, they will have their own individual mechanisms. And, you know, I think social media, I, I wouldn't necessarily use it as a crutch, mm. but I've made some very, I would say some very good, good friends from, from social media in terms mm. of sometimes talking to people who you may not never, you know, you may not never meet, but, you know, to know that you've got, you know, somebody out there that you can speak to, you know, I, I I speak a lot to 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 Kulan, who, who's obviously lives in Sweden, mm. but like incredible human being to talk to. You know, and it's and it's to have that kind of relationship with somebody where you can just talk to them and go, hey, actually, this is how I'm feeling, and they go, yeah, do you know what I've, you know, I, you know, they'll 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 be able to give you advice and kind of get you through the the middle of it. Obviously, I I mentioned Carson a lot, and Carson's Carson's the exact same. You know, mm. it, they're rely, you know, they're very reliable people to have and that's what I'm thankful for in, in terms of social media. I think in terms of as a, as a wider point, I think that social media could be used, you know, a lot more to, to, to kind of just, you know, let people know that actually the, there's something not quite right, or there's not something that you're, you're feeling right with at the moment. Mm. You know, I've, I, you know, we've seen, we've seen the PES community, you know, have some very hard times as of late, you know, there's quite a few people that have had a, a lot of things go on. Uh, you know, and you know, it, it is it is a tough world out there because when stuff happens to you and you're not quite expecting it, mm. that that's kind of where you need you you know you need people to kind of rally around you, and you know I think social media plays a very important part in getting that message out there of you know what you aren't actually alone. There are people out there that can help you, mm. um, you know, and the Samaritans is a, is a small part of that, um, but you know just just checking in on you on your boys. I know I've said that before, but checking on your people, mm. like, cause you know, it, it may all be sunshine and rainbows on social media from, you know, from the face of it. But then when you dig be behind it, actually it's a 
totally different story. Mm. And I think sometimes it's, you know, it's it's cheesy and it's corny, but you know that you know you see plenty of plenty of you know campaigns where they say, you know what, it's okay to not be okay, mm. you know, and to ask people twice. You know, if somebody goes, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. You know, you just yeah, are you sure? Everything? Are you sure you're everything all good? Like, don't don't leave it hanging. Mm. Don't ever leave it hanging. Just ask twice, just to be on the safe side. You know, for some t- for some people, like obviously we are self enclosed in the Pez community. Like that's where me and you have met Wes. That's where me and you, me and like you have grown a friendship out of really. Like where it's like if we both didn't be involved in in Pez, like or if we never had grown up playing Pez, like we probably would have never met. Yeah, and like there's that we could say that the same for you know like all the lads that I'm very friendly with, like within Pez universe, like that I I talk to pretty much on a daily basis. Like, you know, like they're my, they're kind of my, so like my social scene now, obviously I have my, my real couple of friends and, and stuff like that. And the real world that I grew up with in school and that, but like, you know, Pez is such a massive part of what I do in my spare time, like that it's, it's, it's all, it's, it's hard not to kind of, you know, build relationships with people. But yeah. I just think sometimes in the Pez community, and it's not just the Pez community because I, I love the Pez community, but I think sometimes in any community, Sometimes it can be hard to step back and go back again. We go back to that. It's kind of hard to go back and, and think to yourself, well, listen, this is just a game at the end of the day. Like the more important thing is, you know, like the person that you're you're talking to on Twitter or the person you're talking to on Twitch. I think there is because it's that disconnect of I think sometimes it's not necessarily that people want to want to kind of they don't hide themselves online. Yeah. I don't think that's the case, but I think it's a case where, you know, I think people, it, it, because you're doing it on a social media platform, be it Instagram, be it Facebook, be it Twitter, where, wherever that might be, I think there's that mental kind of disconnect where you have kind of go, oh, well, this is just to an account. Mm. Like, and I know a that, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might be doing this to a bot. And, you know, there's, there's that old adage of, oh, but they'd never say it to my face. And, and to be fair, some some probably wouldn't. Some probably mm. wouldn't say to, you know, you wouldn't say that to somebody in the street. Mm. You know, like if I saw a parking warden, actually, that's probably a bad example because everybody swears at parking wardens. But <laughs> if, I, if, I saw, if I saw the crossing guard or the lollipop lady or the lollipop man and, like, I don't know, he doesn't stick his lollipop out in time and I go, oh, mate, do you know what? You're a, you're a, mm. you're a, you're a horrible piece of work <laughs> oh where's that effect i see it. i don't swear i try not to yeah but I, like, you caught yourself but well like, there if that was me i just yeah it would have been a, yeah you give him a round of you give him a round of uh you know a barrel right yeah. um you know you imagine the looks you'd get in the street mm. imagine the looks of people going is that guy all right is that, is that guy <laughs> being okay because he's he's literally just like stone cold stunned the crossing guard <laughs> he tripped over his own shoelaces yeah. like is he all right like and i think there's, there is that disconnect because you mentally you just go well i'm just putting that out there i'm just putting it out there and that and that's it mm. you know it's like it's almost like it's like an empty ether box that you're putting in but people actually forget there's human beings behind these accounts you know there are like humans that will read these replies there are mm. humans that will read you know different things and and you know the 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 brief stuff that i've seen on on kurt in terms of in terms of what happened and, and things like that is that you know i i got asked about it in my stream he's like oh do you, do you think it's right what happened to him it's like well look if he's been warned of it previously and it, it, i'm not saying he had or he hadn't but i was like if he's been warned about it previously and he's, he's con- then he's continued to, to do it then of course, there's there, there's only so many actions they could take. They mm. banned him from the the esports events. You know, uh, th- there's only so much you can do before it goes down that route. Doesn't you're never going to please every single person that you come across in in your life. Oh, like it's just about I think and like what we mentioned at the start. It's just about like treating everyone the same. Like let let I like don't let people like walk all over you or treat you like shit or whatever. But I would never let somebody's treatment of me define how I treat them. Do you know that kind of way? Like I yeah. never, I would never, if if I had a bad experience with somebody and I'm a generally happy-go-lucky, polite person, I wouldn't be a dick to them. Now, like that's not saying that I'm like a soft touch or a doormat that somebody could slap me in the face and like I'd go up to them the next day and want to give them a kiss. 
like that's not what i'm saying but like i wouldn't let somebody's treatment of me define how i want to be as a person and i know that that's very hard because like if anyone that is listening to this has ever heard me play pez like i just <laughs> like embrace my inner ikeen where like everyone is shit and like i just lose the head and throw the controller and stuff but like in terms of who i am as a person like that's you know i try to actually be a bit better than like that's just kind of like yeah. a, a heightened version of like rage that i I'm, i don't go around like that do you know what i mean like if if i'm at work and the boss asks me to do something i don't like you know throw my pen at him do you know it's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. just a heightened sense of kind of like you're doing a video or whatever some people are incredibly open with their issues some people are incredibly guarded with their issues and again both are perfectly okay mm. like people will deal with things exactly how they want to deal with them and and you know that's absolutely fine mm. you know I, I know some people that are you know incredibly guarded with with how they are and how they, they're feeling and you know and the stuff that they're going through and and you know fair play to them because mm. they're you know they're coming out the other side of things whereas you know like i said it's it you know but the way that you propose yourself or the way you put yourself over on, on Twitter or Insta or Facebook, it's a snapshot. And, and you know, it might actually just be, here's the one good thing that's happened today. And the 20, you know, the 23 hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds for the rest of the day have actually been absolutely awful. Mm. You know, it's only as much as somebody wants to let you in on. Mm. You know, I think that's why, I'll, you know, again, how I am on social media is just like, if I'm having a shit day, I'll, I'll just tell you I'm having a shit day. Because, mm. like, I don't I don't ever want it to be like, oh, well, don't worry, Wes, you're always happy. Because it's like, it, it's it's not a true, it's not a true reflection on how I am as a human being. Mm. You know, some people see me on stream and they'll, they'll see me be perfectly all right. And there are some times where I'll cut a stream early and I'll have about three or four people DM me going, do you know what? Actually, we've noticed there's something wrong. Is everything okay? Mm. And I absolutely love those people for that because it's like, do you know what? Like the fact that I have people that, that care to that extent to, you know, to check in and go, Hey, actually we noticed there was something wrong. Is everything okay? Mm. Like it means the world because then it's like, do you know what? Actually I don't have to go to my missus like, cause God knows my missus has enough on her plate mm. and I don't need to add to her kind of plate when mm. things are going badly you know you know everybody has stuff going on so for those people who kind of take the time out to you know to check in you know that they're, they're, they're absolute heroes mm. you know and and they and to them it's something minor and they're only just checking in to to the person on the receiving end it's almost like you've just thrown them you know the the rubber ring off the sinking ship mm. you know like and you know, I've I've had experiences of it of doing it where like I'll reach out to somebody via a DM or I'll send a text message, and all of a sudden it'll be I will think it's something completely minor, but to them it'll be the greatest thing that's ever happened to them. Mm. And I I don't register it as that. I just register it as actually I'm just trying to be just a normal nice human being here. Like mm. you know, and that's all it is. It's just being nice to each other. It's like it's not it's not a hard concept. You know, it's not like we're we're saying please solve the uh, theory of relativity we're like literally going <laughs> we're literally going just be nice to each other mm. it's like easy concepts works very well yeah and it, wor- it, it works very well like offline i think like in the real world i think i would like to believe anyone i kind of deal with like in a day-to-day basis like in the real world like the majority of them are actually you know they're kind of nice like i wouldn't surround myself with people i suppose otherwise and you're probably the same but like online is just like the wild wild west you know you can't you can't decide and you can't control fully who you're going to if you want to engage in social media like you can obviously if you just delete instagram and twitter and facebook you have no interaction online at all but like even on psn like or xbox you're going to get messages abusive off people and stuff that's just the way it is unfortunately but yeah. like if you if, if you do kind of step back and think like you know okay like i'm not actually i'm not actually going to engage with this person or i'm going to ask this person he seemed a bit different this tonight on a stream or and we're not just talking about the pez community obviously yeah, here but life in general life in general you know because it is it is kind of it is difficult when you are putting yourself into something as chaotic as a social media platform because you can't control who who emails you you can't control who engages with you 
like if we put up a tweet like i put up a tweet today about i don't know it was like a classic one of the classic pez players and like a guy messaged me back with a picture of like a smashed controller and i was like okay like that has nothing got to do with yeah. you know i think shales actually put up a funny funny message and it was just like oh i don't think that's the answer but like you know i kind of was like looking at this guy and i was thinking like you know if the game is getting you that angry that you're kind of tweeting me a picture of a, of your broken controller like which has nothing got to do with the topic that is at hand here like maybe it's time to actually just like step away for a while yeah. you know it's it's just it is you do see a lot of a lot of stuff like that where it's like it's kind of you just have to be nice to people i think you know i didn't message him back and be like oh don't message me you know what i mean i was just like look like mind yourself kind of you know and that was it um yeah. but yeah man that's kind of we could be we could talk for hours as usual yeah genuinely genuinely the minute you get talking to me about kind of like social media mental health all that kind of stuff i could go for days here yeah but it is it is <laughs> it is a huge i i think especially as well because gaming even if you're playing gaming like socially like if you're playing co-op or something like gaming as a whole can be kind of it's one of the well no i won't even say that but it is one of the more like it can have the tendency to be one of the more lonelier like hobbies do you know what I mean? Like, especially if you're if you're streaming like for six, seven hours, or you're editing a video for four or five hours in YouTube, or even if you're sitting down playing a game by yourself for three or four hours, yeah. like it is a different experience than going out to the pub with your mates and having a few, you know, having a bit of a laugh, or it's different than going to the cinema, or like you know, different than playing local five side or whatever. Like, it is a very different kind of experience for most people. So I do think that it should be talked about more. You know, and we're probably boring half the people to this podcast to death. But like, I think it is an important topic to bring up, and especially when it's something that you're so passionate about doing charity streams yeah. for and stuff. Do you know, it is. It does tie in nicely into the topic. Like, so yeah, yeah. To anybody that we bored, we're sorry. We're sorry. Yeah, yeah we're sorry that we spoke about mental health. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just all pays, but we'll be back talking about pays next week on episode twenty three and. We're probably going to be turning our attentions towards the future with Pez twenty twenty one. Get the ball rolling on that, um, and we probably we're probably due a guest, are we? We're probably due a guest in. I think we stage. are. I think we are at some point. I yeah. Think, yeah. I think the I think the people are getting tired of our two voices for the last like ten episodes. Yeah, and I think the over under of getting somebody in, I'm pretty sure now what odds on to getting a guest. <laughs> we, we do need to get somebody in at some point. Yeah, we definitely do because there is some legends in the Pez community that we can call on i'm sure that would love to get their their voice out there but um yeah man that's going to be it for me anyway um we're just closing in on an hour i think so hopefully we'll have this up um pretty soon depending on time of recording it's the the 27 tonight we were going to touch slightly we we've kind of overran our our schedule even though we never stick to our schedule this is always <laughs> a one take like it's it, like i was talking to shales the other day and he was like He's like, it's just gas. You just record for like an hour. Like any mistakes you make, just fucking roll with it. Like I don't edit out the mistakes. I just <laughs> leave them in. But um, we were going to talk about the Champions League, obviously, but we might leave that until the next week. I will just say that I'm feeling very confident about my my pick this year, which was Bayern Munich. They have a, had a convincing win over Chelsea. Um, a couple yeah, of episodes well, back in the podcast, well, I picked them I, to win it out. So. I'm pretty sure I picked Liverpool. You did? You picked the pool, yeah. So... So I'm expecting them to do over, uh, do over uh, Athletic Madrid. You're expecting or you're hoping? I'm expecting. I'm expecting. <laughs> I'm expecting them to do the job. Yeah, but then I think again, they will. then again, though, Simeone's bringing concrete and bricks to yeah. uh, to Anfield, so he's building so a wall. He's building. He's building that solid wall. Jesus Christ! It's going to be some. I'd say that's going to be some game. Yeah. If well, they don't in score terms- in the first half, like that'll be some game. Yeah, well, in terms of in terms of performance, a, a, a small one to to leave us on. Um, I would say, in terms of performance of the round so far, uh, individually has to be Haaland because he nearly broke the net at Dortmund. Yeah, he's classy. Me. And um, Manchester City for winning at the Bernabeu. Yeah, like, big who, one as well. Because I'm not being funny. I did not pick them getting a the result there. Mm. Um, but uh, and yeah, they came from one 0 down, didn't they? They came for one yeah. nil down. Uh, it was De Bruyne, De Bruyne penalty, and I think Jesus got the other one. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, so I it was. I watched Leon and Juve last night. Actually, instead, that was a pretty boring game. Yeah, but 
but was it Musa Dembele? No, it was Tusa. Yeah, Tusa. Yeah, yeah, Tusa of all people. I tell you though, they don't have a bad team. No, they won't. They wouldn't win it, but they don't actually have a bad team. And At- Atlanta or Atlantic could cause problems as well. They're tr- they're true practically, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they demolished. Oh, who did they demolish? Valencia, wasn't it? Yeah, it's Valencia. It's like four one. Yeah, yeah they, so they they're pretty much around. true unless we have a, a miracle comeback like a la Liverpool last year or against Barca. Nah. I don't think that'll happen though. I think they're actually a good team, and they yeah. were like they were they were up like four one, and they like brought on two strikers as <laughs> their substitutions. It's incredibly yeah. attacking manager. Just mad attacking, mad attack. Gasparini is yeah. their manager. Who who is of course in terms of set size. Yeah, he's one of the best managers of yeah. my club. He's so. like he's like <laughs> my club god manager. <laughs> Him and Santos and McCarthy. He loved McCarthy there for a while as well. But, oh, um, one one quick thing, and, and again, I know I keep thinking of quick things. Um, thoughts on thoughts on the DP the DP four legends that have been released so oh, far. Oh yeah, man, we totally you glossed get, over you that. Didn't get, you didn't get the right Keane, so I no, bet you're so Robbie, disappointed. Robbie, I had heard rumors that Roy was going to be coming, but it was actually Robbie. I heard that it was a Keane coming. I didn't actually <laughs> seen Robbie coming. Like I didn't, I didn't, I actually delighted that he did because he's probably a more like he's in terms of Ireland, like he's probably our most decorated player um and obviously denny Irwin is is just an absolute legend um Den Irwin, dennis law Robson, dennis law then you have yeah Guardiola. i bagged myself cruyff uh who did i bag myself today cruyff and uh van der vaart i bagged today yeah some tasty like i think the legends have been good and again this is something that we spoke about before as well where like it's coming into like you know february march april this is when usually the best content starts to come for Pez for whatever reason. So I do think over the next couple of months, we're going to get some really good legend campaigns and stuff, you know, as we lead into Pez 21. So yeah. I'm sure we'll cover that in the next podcast, but yeah, we'll, we'll come back with a proper, we'll Pez come back with that. But yeah, the legends, man, I was, I was impressed that they added so many and such a like wide variety of choice because yeah. you could have legends there that like, you know, our fathers would probably be like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Look, he looks, he looks amazing or whatever compared to like, you know, Robbie Keane, who's a current enough player, or Guardiola, obviously, is a manager now. Lampard, obviously. Um, so, yeah, there's loads of them. There's loads of them, and I think more to come, probably. But, yeah, man, that's going to be it from us, I think. Episode 22, done and dusted. We will be back same time next week, recording Wes, hopefully. Um, yeah. All going yep. well. But, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. And uh, I will talk to you in a bit. Thanks for everyone that stayed tuned in, whether you're on the way to work, whether you're on the way home from work, whether you're you're lying in bed thanks for sticking with us spending your time with us listening to the podcast as usual and for the support um and Wes, uh, i'll let you tell people where they can check us out if it is their first time because i usually get it wrong if it is their first time listening to us but uh yeah i'm gonna say peace lads and i'll let Wes uh, see you out all right good luck yep so just in case you are listening to us for the first time you can catch us on itunes on soundcloud and on YouTube as well. And just anywhere you get your podcast, really, you pretty much find us from one way or the other. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been me, uh, Roger FC, and uh, he's been a Midnight Kid, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.